Narcissist. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental health condition in which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. They need and seek too much attention and want people to admire them. People with this is with this disorder may lack the ability to understand or care about the feelings of others. And the word that sticks out here to me, what are the symptoms of narcissistic behavior? Entitled. So let me just look at this word entitled. Or entitlement the fact of having a right to something claim privilege permission what does being entitlement means the state or condition of being entitled a right to benefit specified especially by law or contract Belief, this is the point, belief that one is deserving of or entitled to certain privileges. So, giving all praises, honor and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha. Khwadash. And double honor to mighty church, the apostles, the elders, and the bishops of Great Millstone who watch over our souls. Shalom to the Akim Burwai that are sincere and serious doing the will of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Khwadash. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 to you all. Stay strong and stay mighty. Yes, yeah, so I'm the brother, the disciple Kosha Banyamian from the Brown Chain, Great Millstone, Barbados. And um, the apostles obviously stay away from the black woman. Now there's a video going around, I wish you could find it. Where this woman is saying that these women, a woman, <laughs> a, a quote unquote black woman, I might add, and she's saying that women are crazy. Now you should then read this here by now, but I want to read it again for myself. Let's get this just get sent to the chat, you know. Listen, just just listen carefully how the mindset of these women are. And they hold them, they don't hold themselves accountable for anything. My baby daddy got promoted. So I appeal for more child support. You, you see, boy, look. Oh, man, boy. Whose heart is sneers and necks? Ecclesiastes 7, verse 26. He ordered a DNA test. And my son failed. He put the results in my mailbox. Well, check this here. I forgive myself for cheating. <laughs> it is at this point. If that man says getting angry, I, I can see a line from my big brother in Ghana. When these when things happen to you, it don't make sense getting angry. You laugh at these things because you come on a higher level now, a level of understanding. And clearly, we are seeing here a woman, six brown chicks. She's saying here, I forgive myself for cheating, but he's being petty. You see that? You see that? He's been my son's dad for eight years. Why goes my child now? How to fix it? In order to fix it, first you need to go find the child's real father. You need to tell the child, well, look. Mommy, mommy was a whore, and the man that you thought was your father for eight years, he's really not your father. 
I have to go now and look for your father. I made some mistakes. I'm sorry. You know? I hope you can forgive me. Let me move on. But no, she's saying here, she forgave herself for cheating. But he's being petty. This is the mind of a warped individual boy and that would be impossible to stay staring from these women. These black women, boy. Why goes my... What, what reason does the man have to remain in the child's life? Now, if you want to remain in the child's life as a quote-unquote father figure... He's not wrong with that, but he doesn't have to, to 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 support or raise his child anymore if he doesn't want to. If he wants to remain a positive role model, but so be it. But for you to demand and to be entitled to still be in the boy's to, for him to still be in the boy's life, he doesn't have to do that. He has moved on because you lied to him for eight years. You lied to him for eight years. And instead of you taking accountability, what you are doing is saying, Oh, I forgave myself for cheating, but he's being petty. No, he's being a man. He's moved on. It is not his responsibility anymore. Why should he stay? He's moving on because you lied to him. For you to walk around and say, no, Oh, he's a... Oh, I got... You know what he run nice me? Oh, he's so nice. He's raising my son. No, he's no, he's not my. You know, he's not the father, but he's just being so nice. Foolish, <laughs> foolish, ignorant, frivolous, senseless. So this man got some sense in his head. And left you because you lied to him for eight damn years. But I expect the man to keep on being frivolous, to keep being nice. And you see the real nice go back to on a rear. Right? I pretend like, 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 nothing happened. I just move on. You ain't even so sorry. You ain't even so sorry after now. Let me rephrase that, because I don't know if you tell you man sorry, but from this from this from this quote you put here, you don't even have an ounce of remorse in this text here. And when you raise a, another man's seed, they grow up, they can um disrespect you, you're my father. You know what I mean? Like there was a one video you watch. The man, stepdaughter, was getting married. He paying for everything. And he requested that he want 20 of his close friends to come. On the invitation. And these women, the, the, her, his stepdaughter and the, the mother and the woman he dealing with, her mother, did refuse to invite his friends, but to turn and invite his real father, the, the, the girl's real father. Total disrespect. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. It's dynasty, niggas. In this text here, you are seeing she's not remorseful for what she's done. She would have continued this life for eight years. Keep playing with this man's feelings and this man's emotions. And in her mind, I have done no wickedness. And that is why the judgment, you know what? A person of kind of mind there. 
You remember can get a harsh judgment, boy. Hey, are you ready to die too? Are you ready to get a DNA test? My first son. He turned out to be mine. But would you know she didn't want me in the boy life? <laughs> she don't want me in the boy life. And this boy's 17 years old now. She don't want me in the boy life. Telling telling a lie. Telling a lie to the other man that raising my son. Making him feel like the boy is his. And that boy's 17 years old. A young man at that. Anyhow, Jeremiah 4 verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fear. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. So you see all the pain you put men through. Let me tell you that. You see all the pain you put men through. All the hurt. All the suffering. It's going to be a serious payback boy. You like sleeping with Tom, Dick and Harry. You know. What are you supposed to got a personal man. The Lord is going to send some troops one away boy. Some of these soldiers with a good third leg. You women, you daughters of Zion can get ravished, boy. If you think getting ravished before in 70 AD was bad, imagine these times now because the Lord said the times coming can be worse than there ever was a time since there was a nation. So, Lord, one of the women, boy, you know what? We're not about to feel some pain, boy. We're not about to feed some fucking pain, boy. So, Rock 36, verse 25. Rear no hedges. There the possession is spoiled. And he that have no wife will wander up and down mourning. So, the point is, rear no hedges, rear no protection is. There the possession is spoiled. So you women are about to get spoiled, boy. You about to get so severely hurt. And there ain't gonna be no remorse, boy. The Lord is really going to judge you. For all the wickedness you've done, boy. You know what I mean? The man that had a woman raised her son for 11 years. And the boy in his ear. And she all bombastic. She all. When did you get a DNA test? And she trying to. She trying to. Instead of she admitting. Well yes it was wrong. She. 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 Going on like she ain't doing nothing wrong. You think you women can get away from, 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 this, from this sort of thing man. Using to pay for my stepdaughter's wedding because her real daddy is the one that's gonna walk her down the aisle. So let me tell you guys about my stepdaughter, all right? She wants her real daddy to walk her down the aisle. Now let me give you a little backstory on, my, on me and my stepdaughter. She just graduated from university, which I paid for. Now, she went to an in state university, but it still cost me about $40,000. Now, I also bought her a car. I bought her a car straight after high school. That way she could go back and forth to school. I bought her a car. She still lives with me and her mother. She does not have a job. Now, she's set to be married on August the 8th. And for the past six months, that's all her and her mother been talking about doing. Being occupied with, being consumed most of the time. Now, her daddy, he don't contribute to not one cent on her. Not her education, not, her, not child support, which is partly her mother's fault because, you know, she didn't fight for that. And, and that's, I guess that's just what the settlement was. And... He only around to make promises. I do that for you. I do this for you. And then take off. And then she'd be heartbroken.
but she adores her father, right? So, like I said, she's set to be married in August. And the wedding venue, I told them they could have it in my home. The wedding venue can hold about 250 people, right? Now, I said, hey, I got a list of 20 people, 20 people that I want to come to the wedding. I'm paying for this at my house. I want these 20 people to come. Do y'all know Saturday, I see one of my friends at the golf course, right? He's supposed to come to the wedding. I'm like, hey, I'm going to see you at the wedding, right? He said, I only got an announcement. I didn't get an invite. I'm like, nah. I let my girlfriend and stepdaughter know to send out the invitations on these few people. And then you're supposed to get an invite. He said, I got something, but it was an announcement. So we walked to his car because I want to check, right? And sure enough, it was an announcement. So I went and talked to my, to my, uh, my girlfriend and said, did you invite those 20 people to the wedding that I, that I told you about? Man, she didn't invite none of them. She said 250 people is a little tight, and I don't think we can get your 20 people in there. Man, I was pissed. <clears throat> and the people that, that were supposed to come, they pissed as well. Then she's going to say, if any of the people that we already invited don't RSVP, then we'll get some of your people in here. I'm like, what? Man, that's crazy, man. Don't even worry about it, man. I'll just be mad. All right? So now, the crazy part about it is, when I check the invitations, they don't even have my name on them. They have her real daddy and her on the invitation that I paid for. I paid for these invitations. That's a disgrace, boy. So you see the money these women, <clears throat> the money of these women um, are against us men, boy. And that's the curses too, you know what I mean? You see? Deuteronomy 28 and verse um, fifty six. The tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for her delicateness and tenderness, her eye, meaning her mind, shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. So her eye will be evil toward her husband, boy. Say. This man doing everything and is being showed no respect. But if he had to withdraw his his resources, he would be called all kind of names. He would be called all kind of names. This is the man here that refused to be in the boy's life anymore because he's not the real father. No, this woman here is saying the man being petty. That's a narcissistic behavior. And and um, and they tell them what behavior. If you're intelligent to the man's resources, you're not intelligent to the man's resources. You see, we is the price. You women are succubus if you really study it, because you want a man. Let me see Kevin 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 Simmons podcast. You want a high value man. He got me at six figures. This is thirty four. So it means he bringing the resources, and you sucking the motor him, cause he must have this third. The fourth and the fifth, in order for him to have your attention, correct? So, which means you, when he brings these, then you're gonna use them to your advantage. So, use a succubus. So, who has the price? Who, who, who really, who's really the price possession? The man. Because the the the, the things you call it for only one percent of men have. So, the man is the real commodity in this world, man. But the scriptures say, Lord, we make a man more precious than fine gold. Just take it like, man. How you got a real daddy on there, her mama on there? Cool. Couple days later, I'm hosting. Hosting the venue at my house. Host, hosting the, the wedding family at my house, okay? It's me, stepdaughter, a girlfriend, groom, and their parents, right? Trying to help everybody get real acquainted. Then a surprise guest shows up. My stepdaughter's real daddy. And I'm like, you know what? You know what, cool. He probably just coming to the wedding, right? But tell me why my stepdaughter proceeds to stand up and announce that her real daddy is giving her away at the wedding. What? The wedding that I'm paying for the, in my house? The daddy don't do nothing for you? My stepdaughter. I mean, it ain't even my stepdaughter, really. It's 
I owe the groom and the bride a deep debt of gratitude because they have a grade inside. I was fuming inside. I wanted to cry or punch some days later. I'm hosting, hosting the venue at my house, host, hosting the, the wedding family at my house. Okay. It's me, stepdaughter, a girlfriend, groom, and their parents, right? Trying to help everybody get real acquainted. Then a surprise guest shows up. My stepdaughter's real daddy. And I'm like, you know what? You know, we're cool. He probably just coming to the wedding, right? You're too damn nice, brother. I hope you see this video too. If you go out to the world nice, call you like you want. Um, a Jordan memory. Nice means foolish, ignorant. Senseless. So he was ignorant, brother. Senseless. Unaware. Not knowing. Too nice, big man. Gets you nowhere. But tell me why my stepdaughter proceeds to stand up and announce that her real daddy is giving her way at the wedding. What? The wedding that I'm paying for the, in my house? The daddy don't do nothing for you? It's giving you away? Ah, oh, and they were just so happy and smiling. Ah, oh, yay, great. Inside, I was fuming. Inside, I wanted to cry or punch somebody. Probably wanted to do both, honestly. So, I took that time to stand up and give my give a toast as well. I said, you know, I owe the groom and the bride a deep debt of gratitude. Because they have opened my eyes tonight. Oh, everybody at the table just smiling. They have let me know that my position in this family is not what I thought it was. Oh, you should have saw the frowns, man. Now they mad. It yeah, you, you, in this society, you can't stand up and be a man. You can't stand up for yourself. You must let everybody walk over you, trample you, use you, and then toss you to the side like a menstrual cloth. <clears throat> me end with this preset, man. Proverbs 31. We start at 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, there's a woman wanting her son. But other women, what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Let me read that again. Give not thy strength to women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Resources, whether of means, whether of men, means or other resources, wealth. Hey, hey, um, wait a minute, boy. I think now Proverbs 6. Yeah, Proverbs 6, verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt. For the precious life. Now, in this case, these women were using you, boy. To be using your resources to pay for a wedding that you can't even host and in your establishment. Don't give your ways to women, boy. Nah. Let him let her father deal with it. Cause it showed you know that you have no respect in that household. It done got serious. I let them know I am not the godfather or, you know, the head of the family that I thought I was, the loved one that would be seeked out in times of need. Nah. I realize I'm an ATM. Yeah. So, since I have been replaced as host as the, of the wedding, I shall be relinquishing, giving my financial duties to the new host. And I will back out monetarily. Good. Good. Yeah. Yep.
Right, that was all we gonna get from that. Um, hey, they mean for it be so long, but you know this text here really, this text here shows the mindset of these women. They really took the integrity, your resources, your wealth. Will they bring nothing? What you bring to the table? You know. That way the scripture says, in that day, seven women will take hold of one man. The ventures can fail, women. You, you, you can soon realize that, boy. And all this entitlement mindset when I got here. Watch and see how fast I get through the window, boy. Watch and see how fast, man. Shall I want?